their destiny. And you know, when we came to this convention and I saw the theme, ask God um, for the nations as your inheritance, I don't know if you realize it or not, but this verse is the verse where our destiny is attached to it. Because if you think about it, why do we need to ask God for nations, for our inheritance? I mean, on one hand, it seems like an obvious thing, but on the other hand, why? But the truth is, and honestly, I'm not speaking from study, but it's from the life experience because God called Chuck and I to the nations as our entire lifestyle. But when, when we ask God for nations, for our inheritance, and it comes from God and God only, because you don't know where this stirring comes in your heart. Sister Gwen, when the Lord called you to China, where did it come from? other than the Holy Spirit speaking to you and calling you to that nation. And little did you know that your entire destiny was tied to that nation and many more nations after that. You see, our spiritual destiny sometimes is tied to a spiritual destiny of a nation. And it's a two-way thing. Your destiny is tied to the nation and the destiny of this nation is tied to yours. And if you don't believe me, you look at the book of Ruth. You look at Ruth the Moab who was born in a nation that worshipped idols, in a nation that was not allowed into the congregation of the Lord, a cursed nation. But by God's divine plan, she's married into a family from Israel. But her marriage is not fortunate because she loses her husband and her brother-in-law and her father-in-law even before she's able to have a child. And suddenly it seems like her hope is gone. Her future is gone. But yet she feels compelled against the common sense, against the tradition of the time to follow her mother-in-law who is desperate, who is depressed, to follow her mother-in-law to the nation that despises her and curses her. But on the way, the mother-in-law tells her, leave me, I have no hope to offer you. And it's true, people have no hope to offer us. People have no hope to offer us, but there is someone who can. And so as her mother-in-law is sending her off, Ruth tells her, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. And your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. She recognized right there that though her mother-in-law has nothing to offer her, but Naomi's God had everything to offer to her. And when she travels with Naomi to Israel, and they're still poor, and they're still destitute, suddenly Ruth has an idea. Let me go into the field and see if I can find favor in the eyes of the owner of the field. You know, as many times as I've read the book of Ruth, I always thought it was Naomi's idea to send Ruth into the field. But it's so clear, it was Ruth's idea. And as she goes into this field, the Lord guides her steps to a particular field. See, she didn't choose a field. She was led by the Holy Spirit into that field. And she labored in that field as a beggar in the corners, picking up the leftover grain that was reserved for her according to the tradition of Israel. But as she worked picking up these leftovers humbly, the owner of the field came and she was the first one that he noticed. And as he noticed her, he sat her at his table and fed her as an honored guest. And then he gave her food to take home. And then he told his workers, let her pick up grain each day, not with the beggars, but with my workers. And then leave for her bundles of purpose in that field. You see, there is a parallel there. That when God calls you into a nation, when God calls you into a field, when God calls you into a harvest, you have automatically gotten his attention. You have automatically received his favor. And it doesn't matter what your needs are. It doesn't matter what your past is. See, your past doesn't matter. If you are like the Ruth of Moabites, coming from the background of worshiping idols, it's canceled because God sent you into his field and your destiny is attached in this field. Yes, Ruth's need was food, and she received her food and more than enough in that harvest, but her greater need was a husband. 
And you remember, she received the husband in this harvest. But not just a husband, but a model of a husband, a godly husband. And not just a husband, but through this harvest, through this field, she had a son. But not just an ordinary son. Ruth the Moabitess, through her husband Boaz, had a son that put the Moabitess, who comes from the background of worshiping idols, into the bloodline of Jesus Christ. You see, Israel was cursing Ruth the Moabitess, but Israel's destiny was tied to Ruth the Moabitess, just as her destiny was tied to Israel. You see, there is a great connection between the nations and your destiny. And when God calls you into the nations, You better listen to that call. Sometimes it goes contrary to your natural desires. In fact, more often than not, it goes contrary to your natural desires. Our ministry, World Missions Alliance, is involved in 16 nations. Each one of them, I have said as a human being, may I never go to this nation, ever, as a tourist or as a prisoner or as in any other way. But each one of these nations, see, God doesn't like it when you say no to him in anything. God wants our lives as an obedient sacrifice to him God likes when you we say use me choose me as you please he doesn't like when he doesn't like it when we make plans and decisions I'm not going to do this or I am going to do this when he's going to call you you will know it's him and this is how you're going to know it's him you will not be able to put that call aside you will never be able to put it out of your head you may disobey it you may set it aside for years but you're missing out because your destiny is tied to that particular nation yeah. or nations and you don't want to miss out and you know sister Gwen meeting sister Gwen and Tommy and the other handmaidens has been such a personal inspiration to Chuck and I and we have um, discovered that the calling that God gave us is not just to take the gospel to the nations because they need it and I know that from my personal experience as Tommy said I was born in the foreign Soviet Union I wouldn't be standing here today if missionaries in the early 80s didn't smuggle gospel tracts into the Soviet Union and one of them found its way to me and I gave my heart to Christ at the age of 14 through a gospel tract that was smuggled by American missionaries into the Soviet Union so I know firsthand how much people desperately need the gospel in the nations that are closed or tormented or or have experienced a disaster or political crisis but at the same time receive solid food you're going to be fed to where your spirit is going to grow and then you're going to be called see you're not here just to grow in your spirit after you grow in your spirit you're called to go and take it out and I pray that each one of you will discover that for which you came here. Maybe it was your healing. Maybe it were, these were answers to some questions that you have in your life. You're going to find that which you are seeking here. But as you receive it, as you experience your blessing, take it out and bless others. Maybe it's your neighborhood. Maybe it's your state. Maybe it's another nation. But always it's going to be outside of your comfort zone. It is going to be your destiny that is tied to that place where God is calling you.